color space and the difference between the OPS laser, or laser TV, which you're seeing today, and a traditional lamp-based visual. And as you can see, the color gamut is roughly doubled in size using a laser technology. Uh, it would also increase with an LED, but I believe the laser has the largest color gamut available. Also, what we're doing with this TV is we're, we are replacing the traditional lamp in the back of a rear projection TV. Um, what type of lamp is this, John? A uh, mercury, mercury, arc lamp. mercury arc lamp is being replaced with three colors of lasers, which we have on the side. If you want to pull up a little bit closer, you'll see the compact optically pumped semiconductor green and blue lasers in a direct red diode. Now, we are the only company in the world that has lasers at this power level in a very compact solid state packaging. So the benefit, obviously, is you need to be the same fit, form, and function as this lamp. And by having the three color lasers with the OPS technology, you can duplicate that. We've got lasers running, as John mentioned, over 12,000 hours, and these lamps are running roughly 2,000 hours, maybe 2,500 hours. So a lot of people that bought rear projection TVs a number of years ago are coming to the fact that now they have to replace the uh, these these lamps. Right. And while it costs you three or four hundred dollars to replace the lamp, the fact is most people don't want to do that themselves. While lasers inside the machine and it'll outlast the the television or lifetime of television. Well, this is a silly question, but when I think of laser, I think of, you know, danger or, you know, burning through things. Is it safe for these consumers? These lasers will definitely be safe for the consumer, and the light will get diffused enough that it'll be safe for the naked eye. Okay, so you, we're looking at time to market? Time to market. Uh, 2007 will be most likely time frame. And then you'll be at CES? Uh, we won't be there, but okay. there will be companies I that see. have our product inside that will be there. Uh, the other the other markets that laser, lasers will be involved with will be large area displays such as laser-based cinema, mm -hmm. uh, digital-based cinema, uh, flight simulators, and other large-scale projection venues such as concerts and museums, planetariums, etc. So it's, uh, it's an interesting opportunity. Right. And those markets are more closely aligned with our current business strategies. So we do have uh, ample opportunities. And then as we go further, it'll be sized down to be using consumers, as, as for consumers. Well, consumer, again, we're trying, Coherent is trying to license the technology with a uh, business partner in order to get some type of, say, upfront fees and royalty streams. And uh, there is a significant amount of interest. So it's just a matter of the OEM, someone that's done it before, someone that manufactures things like TV or other type products, a video camera that you're filming this with, to you know, step up and strike a deal with them. Has anyone stepped up that you can speak to? Or is that still very classified? Uh, it's, it's confidential information, but uh, it's, uh, I would say if we do ink a deal, we'll, we will have to make it public. But we'll find out at CES because there'll be well, hopefully folks there. We, hopefully we sign something by CDS, but you know, we'll, we'll see. You bet. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Yeah. That shows the red, and there's the gecko. The gecko, the green. The green. Hey, let me zoom out, then we'll get the screen. Is how we destroy the coherence of the, of the light so it's not expected.